Hello, after the introduction of what is an oscillation, we will now begin to seek to understand more about SHM. We will start by using the concepts of kinematics. This section on kinematics of simple harmonic motion will be divided into three videos. For the first video, we will look at how the kinematics concepts of displacement, velocity, and acceleration is related to the mathematical concepts of graphs and equation as a function of time. If you look at the simple animation on the slide now, you can see that as the object is moved up and down under the influence of the spring, it will trace a wave-like uh, graph at the background. You can also see this when you try out the simulation in SLS that the displacement time graph will look like a sinusoidal graph. So based on this shape of the displacement time graph, we can deduce that sinusoidal graph can represent simple harmonic motion. So for simple harmonic motion, it can either be sine or cosine. That will depend on the starting position. So for sine graph, the timing, if the timing starts at the center, then the displacement at time t equals 0 will be 0. So it will be a sine graph. On the other hand, if your timing starts from the extreme position or maximum displacement at the amplitude, then you can see that at time t equals 0, the displacement is at x0. So for such cases, we use a cosine uh, function to represent uh, the displacement. So if the timing starts at the center oscillation, we use a sine graph. If the timing starts at the amplitude position, we will use a cosine graph. So the general form of such equation would be x0 represents the amplitude. Omega is the angular frequency. And t is the time. If you recall from the definition of angular frequency, angular frequency is 2 pi over the period. Now let's look at example 2.1. We have a mass on the, on the end of a spring and is initially given a vertical displacement of 3 cm from its rest position and released. So rest position is uh, the equilibrium position. Now you are told that if the subsequent motion has a period of 2 seconds, what would be the displacement after the very first second. So one second is half of the period of two seconds. So from starting from the amplitude position, then you can deduce that after half a period, the displacement will be at the opposite end of the other extreme position. So if you use sign convention, if I take upwards to be positive, then initial displacement is 3 cm. Then after one second, half a period later, the displacement will be negative 3 cm. It, is, it all depends on the sign convention that you use. If you can also see this as if the light spring is initially given a downward displacement, then the, after one second, the, this object would be 3 cm above the equilibrium position. So for such case, you can use a cosine graph to represent the displacement time graph because at t equals 0, it starts from the equilibrium position. It starts from the amplitude position. So for my sine convention here, I start off with above, then at five, one second later, it is below. You may interpret the question as the other way. It's okay. Now, for part B, I need you to pay attention. Part B asks for the displacement after 0.75 seconds. So for this, unless we draw a graph and plot the graph and use the graph to find out, if not, we can use equation. So if you want to use equation, 
let x be x not cosine omega t we use cosine like i said before because the starting position at time t equals zero it is at the amplitude position so amplitude position the amplitude is three omega is two pi over period so the period is two seconds and we are looking for the displacement after a time of 0.75 seconds so the relevant substitution is as shown now at this point in time it will be good if you can use your calculator to try to work out what will be the value there, there's a possibility of getting two values the first is 2.99 cm which is close to 3 cm or minus 2.12 cm one of these is correct the other one is wrong more importantly is how do we ensure that we do not get the wrong one please take note here that when you use expression 2 pi over t for omega then you are your calculator must be in the radian mode because 2 pi is in radians if you want to leave your calculator in degree mode then you have to put the numerator as 360 degrees only if you put to the correct mode in your calculator then you can get the correct answer of 2.12 cm which is corresponds to this point here which is the correct answer 2.99 cm is not possible because that will be at the amplitude position that is close to the amplitude position now for part c what given the displacement time graph what will be the corresponding equation for velocity as well as the corresponding equation for acceleration so this part c will lead us nicely to the next section of our notes so how do we get velocity from displacement from the concepts of kinematics you know that velocity is the dx dt is a differentiation of displacement rate of change of displacement with time so when you differentiate the cosine graph you will get a sine graph and the amplitude now will be omega x naught so this equation now gives you the how velocity varies with time how about acceleration for acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with time so all you need to do is differentiate again differentiate the, the expression for velocity so by differentiating differentiating sine you get cosine and you bring out the omega again so the amplitude of the acceleration is omega square x naught so now i refer you to page seven of your notes for this section uh, i'm going to use instead of using cosine as in my example i'm going to start off with sine graph so if my displacement time graph is a uh, sine graph then the corresponding velocity graph because you differentiate sine you get a cosine graph note that the amplitude now is omega x naught and the graph is a cosine graph it's similarly if you want to get the acceleration time graph you just have to differentiate the, co the velocity time graph so by differentiating a cosine graph you get a minus sine graph with amplitude of omega square x naught so by expecting this uh, all these three equations on your lecture notes or you can go back to the SLS and look at the various simulation which is looks like this so you can see that the these are the three graph put onto one axis the pink graph is your displacement time graph 
the blue graph is your velocity time graph and last but not least the acceleration time graph is labeled as uh, green the green line so if your pink graph the decision time graph is a sinusoidal graph sine graph the velocity time graph will be a cosine graph and then your acceleration time graph would be a minus sine graph so there are five important deductions about SHM first the first one is that displacement velocity and acceleration all vary sinusoidally with time sinusoidally like i said just now can be either cosine or sine second important point if you notice that the maximum velocity as per look at the blue graph is 3.1 and you get 3.1 by using the expression omega x naught minimum velocity as you can see from the blue graph the minimum velocity is zero maximum acceleration if you differentiate the velocity time graph you get minus 4.9 from this expression and is given by omega square x naught this will be the maximum acceleration and for minimum acceleration, sinusoidal graph or sinusoidal graph, the minimum value will always be zero. So this is the uh, first section, the first video of kinematic or simple of motion. We have just looked at how displacement, velocity, and acceleration varies with time. Next, we will look at how velocity and acceleration of SHM varies as a function of displacement. See you in next video.